Hey, welcome to Forge Master Metal Reviews, the place where you get the most out of your metal releases. This is part one of our viewer comments, What and Blew Your Mind. Everybody's got that band that blows their mind in their metal history. Usually it's when you're young, when you're impressionable. We got some great comments. You guys picked some great stuff. If you haven't yet, beat the shit out of the like button. Subscribe if you're new. Let's get to it. Our first comment here is Raven Soul. He said, Hellhammer on the Friday Rock Show in 1980. He it blew their 16-year-old head off and never been the same since. This is not something I'm familiar with, but it's fucking really cool that Hellhammer was on a rock show in 1984. This is around the age where most people get into metal. That like 13 to 16 year old range of like, holy shit, these are my people. You know what I mean? When was that for you? You know, 13, 14 years old where I started to listen to bands like Sentenced and Cryptopsy and Children of Bodom and Rhapsody and they found your, you found your people, you know, You're wearing band shirts and stuff. And Definitely. I mean, for me, it was like... Opeth and Children of Bodom was another one of them. In Flames, all those bands just get you into it. And we went to different high schools, so it's interesting how like you have that one common thread that just brings you together, you know? Right. So we also have Ziltoid here, who oh, very uh, obvious pick with Devin Townsend and Accelerated Evolution. Glad says Tools Schism on the radio as a teenager went out almost immediately to get Lateralis. Album completely blew my mind, especially being so early in the rock and metal journey. Even even though the times have changed and in the way that people have consumed music and or have been exposed to music, you're always going to find your place. You're always going to land where the universe intends you to land. Mm -hmm. think, yeah. Know? And what's cool about it is all you got to do is dip your toe in the water. And then all of a sudden those spider webs form of like, oh, what influenced this band? You know, you have like Metallica. They, they were influenced by the Misfits. And then you have that entire evolution just kind of gets laid out before you. And then all of a sudden you're this weird historian of the whole metal <laughs> genre. And you end up on YouTube talking about it like a couple yeah. of nerds. Pool Schism is just such a great example because they were a band that when they first came out, it was like you never really knew where to put them. They were rock. They were prog. You know, and then all of a sudden you got all these music nerds that are dissecting them into the point of like looking at the Fibonacci sequence and overlaying it with Tool's music. And there's just this weird conversation that starts when you start to worship these bands and you get converted into a metalhead that just keeps going throughout time. Yeah. Now, now here's an interesting one from Eric. They said, for starters, it was the Beatles when they were about four and then Rush and Porcupine Tree about 17 or 18 and then Death followed by Enslaved. I think it's kind of cool how they kind of put their, their whole progression there. What do you think about that uh, That's fucking, that's awesome, dude, because I look at it like the evolution chart of like, you know, from ape to human, you know, <laughs> yeah. not that the Beatles are apes by any means, <laughs> but that's not what I mean. I'm just saying like, in terms of the evolution of your taste as you discover music, it's cool to see that unfold. And what's interesting here is clearly Eric is very into the proggy stuff. Mm, right. Beatles, big influence on Rush, mm -hmm. you know, and then you get into Rush, who are like the titans of writing catchy prog music, which is really difficult to do. Mm -hmm. Porcupine Tree is a great follow-up to that too. That's another band that's really good at writing hooks and things inside prog music. And I could see his his progression too, getting a little more on the extreme side, you know. And I even argue that the Beatles had some extreme for the time songs, yeah. but you know, it's 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 edgier and edgier. And then he lands on Death, and it's like okay, yeah. And then you get into Enslaved, which is like I feel like the Olympus of, <laughs> you know, taking that extreme metal sound and blending with progressive music in the perfect way. Mm -hmm. So fantastic picks there, Eric. Yeah, thanks for thanks for that great talking point, Eric. Fraser Kokik says, Bolt Throw, Those Once Loyal, Winterfilleth, The Dark Hereafter, Moon Sorrow, Humalden Eka, and most recently, Radiohead's OK Computer. Very eclectic choices here, Fraser. Yeah, I mean, seriously, these all are mind-blowing albums. Like, The Bolt Thrower, Those Once Loyal, that's like <sighs> One pummeling fucking yeah. riffs and winter fellas the dark hereafter is black metal perfection mm -hmm. like i can't think of a better atmospheric melodic black metal record to come out of the uk during that time period than them that's a that's a mind-blowing album for sure if you have not heard that that is like if you don't like black metal you will after you hear that one <laughs> right yeah you know <laughs> and moon sorrow same thing that's like you're taking that melodic folky progressive stuff and just meshing that all together in this beautiful representation of what the band's about you know and i'm not really a big fan of radiohead but they are pretty mind-blowing yeah. in the sense
sense that like there's no one else that sounds like that. Right. Oh yeah. They're, yeah. Radiohead is their own genre almost. Right. Yeah. I think you have to almost kind of like be in like the right frame of mind or the right place in your life you know to have yeah. radiohead you know fall into your lap and connect with you but really strong picks thank you for sharing that with us we've got andy who says he was 16 in 1994 and it was machine head it was the first time he had heard davidian on the radio one rock show they were very different than any other metal band they were listening to at the time and in the uk they got me into testament in the more technical bay area sound thank you for sharing that with us andy great Fuck yeah andy seriously i mean this is a really great example of like i said before that spider web thing you discover the more accessible band first and then in this case it's machine head mm -hmm. and then you start getting into the other bands that are a little bit more on the underground side compared to machine head and in this case it's testament which i don't understand why testament never really popped off they're like if it was a big five they would be the fifth but <laughs> right. no one ever recognized that and it fucking it sucks yeah, like why weird. not you know, know. It's a good thing you discovered them because Testament's on, It's they're still going and they're still crushing it and they're a big piece of the metal scene's success. Uh, Mark, Queensryche, Promised Land, specifically the song I Am I might seem lay now, but to a sheltered 14-year-old, it was like seeing the world in color for the first time. Damn, that is a... That gave me goosebumps, yeah. dude. <laughs> the, your mind was really blown yeah. by Promised Land. Right. I, th that's an interesting album to pick. Mm -hmm. Most people would pick Operation Mindcrime just because of, you know, the hits on that record. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, Queensryche is undisputed kings of Queens. influencing. Yeah, Queens. <laughs> just influencing so many different progressive rock and metal bands. Mm -hmm. So, awesome pick there. Yeah. Alex, right up your alley, Opeth, Blackwater Park. My introduction to the band, I'd heard about how brilliant they were and how they were metal's best kept secret at the time. But nothing prepared me for the pure excellence of it all. And it's still one of my favorite albums in the one that they've never topped. You're speaking my language here, <laughs> Alex, honestly, because this was the album that got me into extreme metal. I was in seventh grade, and I remember we were in between houses. It sucked. I was sharing a bedroom with my little sister, and we were 10 years apart, so she was super annoying, but I loved her. So I love her so much, but she was super annoying as a toddler. So my only saving grace was my Discman with Blackwater Park, and I remember my young, impressionable mind just wanting to learn how to play guitar and learn how to be a musician and all this stuff just because of that record and i think you're right i don't think they've topped it since then but still life is a pretty close contender for me in terms of mind blownness We've got Carl, who says, Quiet Rives, 13 years old when Metal Health came out, and Kevin Dubrow's opening scream just sent a freaking chill up my spine, and I became a metal head instantly. That is a fucking anthem. Yeah. I do not blame you for converting after that song. No, Great no. pick. Anyone who listens to that record and is like, meh on metal, I don't, I don't understand you. Yeah, get the fuck up. Matt Davis, hard to say for me, it generally takes a few listens before I'm reeled in, but some notable mind-blowing bands after thinking about it would be Ulver, Slayer, and Blood Incantation, with the best lyrics in the past 10 years or so, he's saying. Yeah. That's fucking those are, deep. Oh, those are great picks. Yeah. I mean, Ulver, I feel like we share that one, mm -hmm. especially with Perdition City, because mm -hmm. when that came out, there was nothing like that. I was that. floored. I couldn't believe that that was like a real album. Album. Like, I was like, is this, are you sure this isn't a movie soundtrack? Like, it's unreal. Yeah. And I wish I went to that show in New York City when they play that album. Mm -hmm. If anyone saw that, comment below how much we missed out and how much <laughs> I'm a fucking chump for not going. Right. And Slayer, I mean, that's, that's definitely a band that converts a lot of people. I'm going to be real honest. I'm not a huge Slayer fan, although I do love... Seasons of the Abyss era, and I fucking love Hello Age just because of the atmosphere on that album. It literally sounds like hell, and mm -hmm. it is mind blowing to me. Yeah. And Blood Incantation is just, that's definitely like its own genre defining thing, but I feel like Tomb Mold are better. Ooh. So, <laughs> well, you know. Thank you so much for leaving those amazing viewer suggestions. Be sure to like us if you haven't already. Subscribe if you haven't. Make sure you check out part two of this episode if it's already out. Go with the gods, Forge Masters. Steer clear of the boiler room. 